So today we're going to talk about the three most common used car paints in the automotive industry. I just uh, opened up the Porsche configurator because I thought it's pretty nice to showcase the different car paints. So the first classic and standard and probably the oldest car paint is just the standard car paint. It's non-metallic. It's really just like a piano. It's painted red or any color and it has a clear coat on top. So if I turn this on red, you see this is a standard car paint. And what a standard car paint means in CGI, I'll show you here. So we've got the standard white material. We're just gonna make it red since it's a red car paint and we're gonna turn roughness to zero. So now we have a standard red car paint. So if we go onto a yellow standard car paint, we can turn it yellow and that's pretty much it. That's how standard car paints work. So they're actually very simple. Um, so if you wanna render cars or yeah, recreate car paints, um, these standard car paints are surprisingly simple. Uh, the only thing missing on this example here in CGI is the orange peel. And that's just a slight noise bump in the clear coat. So I can just recreate one real quick. So you kind of see what I mean. So just um, hook up the factor to the normal, create a bump node. We're gonna turn the strength to, I don't know, 0.1. Bump this up as well. Always hook up the noise texture to the height input. So now you can see there's this slight bump. So we're gonna turn off the detail um, and even turn down the strength even more even more it's very slight in real life even more so maybe like this so you barely see it but on a real car paint there's a slight bump in the clear coat pretty much always um, and it's called an orange peel so in any car paint you will have this so this is the only unique part about this or it's not unique it's unique on every car paint but this car paint also has this orange peel so if you want to make it even more realistic definitely add an orange peel on top so next is the metallic car paint so this is really the modern most popular car paint used on any car really and the key difference of a metallic car paint is that it's metallic uh, so there's tiny metallic flakes in the car paint that actually turns it metallic so it's actually metal but since it's flaked it has a certain roughness so as you see here this is a chrome monkey now we don't want a chrome monkey so it has a roughness and every metallic car paint has a different amount of roughness and a metallic car paint also has a clear coat and also here you could add an orange peel if you do close-ups of the car paint, for example. And if you wanna do it completely correct, the car paint isn't controlled by the roughness controller in a physical-based workflow. You would actually use flakes to control the roughness. So there's different, different ways you could do this, but I'm just gonna show you one quick way. So if we hook up the color to the normal input, we're gonna use a um, separate RGB node, we're gonna split up the RGB colors of the Voronoi texture. Then we're gonna combine them again, but not all of them, only red and green. Blue, we're gonna combine or add with one. And now, since it's a normal map, we're gonna throw in a normal node in between. We're gonna scale up this whole thing. And now you see, we not, not only have uh, flakes, which look nice, we are actually going to control the roughness with the normal. So as you can see, if I change the normal amount, it's gonna actually change the roughness and I'm not even touching the roughness. So this is how it works in real life. Uh, and basically the flakes are very flat. So there's a low roughness and the more angles these flakes have, the more rough the light will be. And what roughness is, is basically spraying the light in different directions instead of spraying them out in one direction. So if you have a flat mirror surface, zero roughness, it's like a mirror. But if you have a rough surface, so the flakes are all bent, like tilted, you're gonna have a rough surface. So that's how it works in real life. Also in 3D, you could do it like this, but I personally don't do it like this because when you render, you often have noise and you maybe use denoisers and often you run into artifacts or just strange looking car paints if you use real 
physical correct flakes. So I actually mostly work with roughness because just more controlled and smoother uh, in the rendering. And you can always add a grain or some kind of flakes on top or just watch my car paint tutorial. That's a little workaround. So I usually actually don't use this technique, even though it's the correct way to do it theoretically. So now we're going to come to the third car paint. It's not used very often. It's uh, sometimes used in a decent fashion. And uh, what I'm talking about is a flip flop car paint. So a flip flop car paint is a variation of a metallic car paint. And the key difference is it changes in colors depending on the angle you look onto the flake. So if you look at the flake, like frontal, like just straight on, it's going to be purple, for example. If you tilt it, it's going to be red. So that's a flip flop car paint and modern cars still have flip flop car paints, but they're very decent. So basically they just mix between orange and red or blue and turquoise. So how you do this would be, so I'm just going to delete my flakes real quick. There's different ways you can do this, but one way is um, using a layer weight node. We're just going to hook up facing to the base color. Uh, we're going to play around with the base color here. We're going to add a color ramp to control this thing. So and now we can make this red, the facing part red and the angled part. We're going to make orange just slightly. So you see, it's basically a red car paint, but just looks a bit cooler. Uh, a lot of modern cars uh, have this, uh, usually costs a lot of money. Also, if you wrap cars, you often have a flop effect um, if you don't have a clear coat. So this is a popular like tuners kind of wrap. Uh, and this is a flip flop metallic car paint basically. Um, and then, yeah, this is the third type of car paint, but then uh, I found a funny picture online. So back when Need for Speed was popular, uh, flip flop car paints were also very popular. So uh, I found this funny image um, and I thought we can just rebuild this as well. So we see the frontal part is like very blue. Let's gonna make this blue. The mid part is uh, like an orange. I don't know, like this. And the far back part, the angled part, the fresnel part is like a yellow. Make this brighter. So, and then we're just gonna add our clear coat again. And now you see, we've got a very, very, very similar look to this car. And this is a flip flop metallic car paint. So they're pretty much dead in this fashion, but they're still used in the modern automotive industry. But like I just mentioned in a way more decent fashion. So yeah, these are the three uh, most common three different kinds of car paints. Um, they can vary between matte looks or glossy looks, but that just means a clear coat or no, no clear coat. So a lot of new Mercedes AMG cars, they have metallic car paints, but they're just lacking on a clear coat. So I'll just recreate that real quick. So a lot of modern Mercedes have like a gray look, like a gray metallic car paint, but there's no clear coat. So it looks kind of like this. Um, so this is also a popular car paint, but it's not a different category. It's just not having a clear coat. So yeah, these are the three types. Standard car paint, just non-metallic, basic, non-rough. Um, then there's metallic. Um, it's the same, but it's uh, controlled by metallic flakes. And the third one is also a type of metallic car paint, but it has special, probably oxidated um, flakes. So they're kind of like titanium, I guess. That's probably also why this is a blue, red, and orange, because in certain angles, it changes the color that it reflects into your eye. So this is a very interesting car paint. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I just thought it's important to understand car paints, because if you understand the categories of car paints, it's way easier to recreate one. So that's pretty much the idea of this video. That's it for today. Goodbye.